conservation lands where wildness is protected and nature preserved. Not to say you won't occasionally encounter new housing. This is our fairy castle here in Wickham Woods. For me, it's really magical and it sort of keeps the child within alive. And I just sort of, I just like the, the fun of it. Maureen Sullivan was walking in the Whitcomb Woods of Dedham when her artist's eye spotted this dead tree trunk. I was with my two boys and said, wouldn't this be perfect for a fairy castle? And they said, come on, Mom, <laughs> we're going home. And I said, no, guys, wouldn't this be great? An interior designer and landscape artist, Sullivan decided the time was right for a work on the wild side. Tree bark, acorns, vines, bittersweet, birch skin. I built a little kitchenette over here and kind of divided the castle up into rooms, a sleeping quarters, a kitchen, and a living room. Presiding over this fairy tale abode, poet Walt Whitman. Sullivan considers the idea of committing random acts of creativity worth the effort. There were a lot of hours. <laughs> there were a lot of hours. But it doesn't feel like work for me, you know? It's just so... It's what I do. I see things and go into artist mode. The idea of artist mode has a particular resonance for Paul Matisse. It's really the, the contrast of the sound and the silence. About a mile into the Groton Town Forest, Matisse has placed six tubular bells high off the ground, a touch of unexpected magic in this cathedral of pines. I think of the bells as being like a voice. Matisse, based in Groton, is an installation artist best known for his sound sculptures at the De Cordova Museum and Kendall Square Tea Station. The sound takes over when you hear it. And it pushes the other sounds apart as if there's something particularly important to a clear bell ringing sound. Placing art in a natural setting has risen to new heights not far away on Big Bear Mountain. You park and you walk anywhere you want. We have about 10 miles of trails. Over 80 pieces of sculpture, and it's growing. The Andres Institute of Art in Brookline, New Hampshire. It is considered at this point the largest sculpture park in New England. The entire mountain sprinkled with sculptures set along walking trails. Those who make it to the top are rewarded with a stunning view of the Monadnock region, as well as the comforts of a couple of bowling alley banquettes. Director John Weidman, a master sculptor himself, says the park is free and open to all. Just don't forget your hiking shoes. And we aren't going to go manicuring the place. Number one, don't no budget for it. But we don't want to take away the natural integration of the work. In other words, the wildness is part of the appeal? Is your imagination not wild? Meanwhile, back in the woods of Upton, Mass., J.W. Oker still can't believe his good fortune. He's taking selfies with a genuine oddity he just found, a previously undocumented headstone, marking the site of an accident two centuries past. That makes me happy that I can't find everything on the Internet yet. Of course, I'll go back and put this on the Internet. And then it'll be on the internet, so there's that far too, I guess. Oker has authored a number of books, but the website, oddthingsiveseen.com, is this Maryland transplant's main outlet. It didn't really start in earnest until I moved to New England. I just got obsessed with the whole of New England. Every weekend, once we moved up here, we were out exploring. In every like nook and cranny, New England is a big part of what made it really catch on and become like not just a project I was working on, but almost like a lifelong kind of like, you know, quest. Obsession? Obsession. <laughs> I'm fine with that. <laughs> Completely accurate in every way. 